Being from New York City, it had molded me into feeling like everything needs to rush all the damn time. And this includes walking on the street, also includes taking the train, and of course, driving. So if there's any traffic, I get pretty upset. If there's any delays on the train in New York City, which happens all the time, every single damn day, I get pretty upset. And if I can't walk as fast as I want to because people are not walking in single file on the street and they like to walk in pairs or triplets or quadruplets and they're blocking the entire sidewalk, I get pretty upset. Simply put, if there is something that I know I could do effectively but I cannot do so, I would get pretty impatient. And this freaking thing right here is the perfect trigger for that. Where's my focus? There it is. Focus? There you go. Right off the bat, the name says Go on the name, right? Go means three things all together. One, portability. Two, being handy. And three, being quick. It's got the first two, right? Because this small in my hand, okay, portable. I could probably slip this into my pocket or in my very favorite sling, which makes it very handy. But when it comes to quickness, I'm not so sure. So here are some of the things about this camera that I hate because they simply are just not time effective for a New Yorker such as myself. Their selling point is that this right here is the camera. This is your portability, right? This is your handyman for taking photos and videos. And the fact that you could put this into here magnetically and you're able to see what you're filming and you could flip this over. It's supposed to make it the perfect vlogging, small, portable, handy, put it anywhere camera. But what I really hate about this thing is the location of these buttons, right? So in order to take this guy back out, you have to press on to this release button. This is a mechanical button only, right? It's not just a button. You press onto this. Now, you gotta be really careful because once you press this, you can't press onto this without grabbing onto this device itself, right? So on the other side, you have two buttons. One is the power button and the other one is your other button to switch between modes. You wanna be able to press this but not simultaneously pressing on any of this on the other side. But that's really hard to do, given that these two buttons took up most of the space on the other side. So I really have to go like this, put my thumb here, put my other finger on this side, and then, and then, I have to use the camera lens as leverage to pull this out. Having to compromise that way, nah, -uh, not a New York thing. So the second thing is pulling the screen out, flipping it out, right? Yes, there is a little slot right here for your, what, your small fingernails to go into. But look, I can't pull this out. Oh yeah, sure. Give me one on the other side, of course. Okay, so let me just try to dig my fingernails into here. It slips right out. There's no grip to flip the screen out. I have to squeeze this incredibly hard. And when I do so, I gotta make sure my other hand does not press any of these buttons. All of that, just to flip this over. Highly, highly not a New York thing. The next thing is how long it takes for the screen to load up when you first turn it on. So if you have your camera off and all of a sudden you see something that you wanna shoot, this is how long you gotta wait. You better hope you don't miss that moment, right? So I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna press the on button and I'm gonna start at the same time, okay? And I'm gonna press stop once you see the screen turn on. Ready? And go. It's 
So that was about, so let's say given my reaction time, it's under six seconds, but well above five seconds. So if you have five, let's say five and a half seconds to waste, sure, sure, this is the camera for you. So yeah, for me, that takes way too long. Now there is a quick capture mode where when the camera is off and you press the record button, it will automatically record for you, but there will be a delay in the display. However, during that delay, there is actually recording going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how long it takes from me pressing this button to when it starts recording. So it's not going to be actual seconds, but I'm going to count from 1 to maybe 10 and see what number it will start recording. So I'm gonna, when I press this, I'm going to say 1 and hopefully maybe by 2 or 3 it will start recording and then maybe 4 or 5 I will start seeing the display. So here goes. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so by 7, the display came up. So, let's review the footage to see when it actually started recording. 5, 6, 7, 8. So the next part is my favorite part, which is the worst part. I say favorite, it's favorite for this video, okay? The next part would be your little selfie stick slash tripod mount. I mean, the, the convenient part they got down, which is the magnetic link right here. See? Magnet, and there's a little clasp that holds it in place so that when you do this, it doesn't come off. But if you are vlogging and you like to set this on a table and you want to talk to the camera, guess what happens? You could turn this into a tripod, but look at this. You open all three of these legs and you try to set it down this little thing right here is hitting the ground first or hitting the table first so okay you will say okay why don't you just extend this pull this out so that this comes up a little bit yeah that is true if I could pull it so without touching the tripod legs I'm gonna attempt to pull this right so I'm gonna do this Pull, 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 pull. I'm pulling all the way. Look, I can't tuck this anymore, right? With normal strength. Look at this. The fourth leg is still hitting the table first. So what you really have to do is now I'm going to try to, I have to close these legs, pull, then open. Now my camera's way too high. The camera here. The camera's way up here, way above my head. What I have to do next is to push this back down. Now I lowered it significantly just so this does not hit the table first, which is completely, utterly annoying to do every time you want to talk to your camera, but you don't want to hold it because you're sitting down at a restaurant somewhere and you just want to talk to the camera. This is annoying. This part is probably the most annoying part for me. So, connectivity, right? I have this hooked up to my MacBook and I'm trying to transfer files over. So I'm waiting for this to show up here. Well, right now it's not showing because I didn't turn it on. So watch what happens when I turn it on. Right? Look how long I got to wait. So I'm going to turn this on right here and it's on it's on but it won't show up on my computer yet until it says you disk mode this let me tell you something this does not work all the time this will not show up if your camera is bugging out so one time I had to unplug this entire thing plug it back turn it back on and it still wouldn't work. So one way to reset this, if you are having any issues with the U-Disk mode, all you have to do is actually remove this one, 
while you turn it off, put it back in, turn it back on, and this should reset itself, and it should be good to go. But this has happened to me at least two to three times, and it's super annoying. So once I hit U disk mode, this right here should pop up. The Insta360 should pop up right there. Overall, I really like how handy and portable the camera is, but in terms of how quickly I could capture things when I see them, I would say I would give it 7 out of 10. But if you're a patient person, unlike me, it's a solid camera to get. Don't get me wrong. So, enjoy!